My name is William Council, and I just want to talk to you a little bit about how to get over past hurts. I know sometimes that's not easy. Sometimes we don't even notice what those hurts are, but something happens and we get triggered. And what I've noticed uh, after talking to different people is what takes place in your mind and in your heart when you're triggered and you start remembering past hurts. And sometimes we don't even talk about or get the opportunity to express how we're hurting because we think nobody will understand or nobody cares or nobody will take the time. And that might be the situation for some of you all. And I know I've been in a situation where I've just noticed that everybody who I was close to was too busy to have a conversation. So we keep things inside. And I just want to assure you today that first and foremost, the Lord is a friend. And he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And the reason why that's important is you don't have to put on a front. You don't have to put on a mask. You can just be honest. You can be honest about what's going on in your mind, what's going on in your heart, and how you, how you have been feeling, right? If you, ever, if you ever saw a hurt animal or a hurt cat or a hurt dog, and you may have tried to help it, maybe you have a, a puppy or you have an animal that, that may have got hurt, and when you tried to reach for them to help them, to extend love to them, what's the first thing you notice that they do? They bite at you, right? The first reaction for most of us in any hurt area for us is to snap back in some way, shape, or form, or to push away our help when it becomes available, or when somebody wants to love us or care for us. Sometimes we don't know how to open those wounds because we think we need to protect it. And I just kind of want to talk about how do you deal with that? It's a hard conversation a lot of us don't necessarily talk about. Um, we kind of brush over it with things. Sometimes we use cliches and, you know, we put a smiling face on, but we have these things that go on on the inside of us. How do you get over that? So let me share with you just three verse, three different sets of verses that I found to help me when I, when I was working through some past hurts or that I bring up when I'm sharing with somebody who might be dealing with some things from their past or dealing with some, with some type of hurt. First set of scriptures are from Psalms, and it's Psalms 32, verses 1 through 7. And this is what he says. Let me read these to you. Psalms 1 says, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was set as in the heat of summer, Selah. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin, Selah. Verse six says, therefore, let anyone, are you anyone who is godly, pray to you while you may be found. Surely, when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Salah. The reason why I wanted to share these scriptures to you and just read to you what David was thinking was, I noticed how he started out when you read verse three, he says, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away. I think a lot of times when we keep silent about the things that are hurting us, we keep silent about the things that never gotten exposed. We waste away. We get sorrowful. We get weighed down by the weight of condemnation, right? A guilty mindset about something that happened or anger or hatred 
that we have towards something that happened to our past or happened to us or feelings we have towards somebody and we never get to express it and we feel guilty about feeling these kind of ways because we love the Lord but we don't know how to deal with all these emotions and being just mad about being hurt. What do you do with the feeling of hurt? And this is what I found that was most powerful in this set. He said, verse five, then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. He says, I acknowledged it. I say, you know what, Lord, this is what I, this is what I got from this. He says, you know what, Lord, I realize this is going on. I acknowledged it. Man, I'm hurt here. I don't feel like this is right. I don't feel like, man, this is okay. I'm, something's going on with me. I, and when you just acknowledge it, that's the first most powerful step that you can take. Then he says, I said, I confess, I will, con I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. That's the most powerful thing you could ever do. If he's your friend and you know it, he's closer than a brother, talk to him. Because confession is not for him, but it's for you to get it out to someone who cares, who will take that burden and give you joy in return. He says, I will confess my transgression to the Lord first, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Sometimes having that inner hate, that inner anger, make us feel guilty, right? Or we might, we, things might spur from that hurt, trying to cope with it, trying to medicate it, or trying to, to, to look for some type of validation when we feel like we can't quite, we can't, we can't, we don't get the attention that we need. We look for it in illicit ways, right? He says, man, once I confessed to the Lord, he forgave me. And in all reality, you've already been, you already been forgiven. You've already been forgiven. The thing that you, that's hurting you, it's already been forgiven. Healing has already been provided. The question is, will you confess it? Will you acknowledge it? Will you confess it to him and get the help that he wants to give you? Verse six said, therefore let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. That is today. Surely, when the mighty water rise, when trouble comes, they will not reach you. You set yourself in a proper position to not be troubled, to not be shaken, to not be stirred up or re-triggered when you just confess the issue to the Lord. Right? The next set of verses I want to share with you is actually 1 John Chapter one, verse nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Remember, unrighteousness is just not right standing with God. And sometimes our hurt can make us feel like if this something happened to me, how, how can I receive healing here? And if you have that kind of doubt that he hasn't provided that feeling, it can affect how you have, how you see yourself in relationship to him. Does that make sense? The most important thing is to remember that he hears you. And if you just confess, not for him, but for you, what's going on in your heart, one, it's easy to find out, hey, that you can be forgiven and express forgiveness to someone who may have hurt you, that you're struggling with, that you can't really talk about, you can't really let go. But when you decide, and if you decide to say, you know what, Lord, I'm, I'm tired of carrying this hidden hurt. I'm tired of pushing away my help. I'm tired of carrying around this weight that I don't really know what to do with, or I'm tired of carrying around this animosity. I want to be free. Who the sun says free is free indeed. And hurt is actually a type of bondage. And you don't want to be in bondage. You don't want to be enslaved to no man unless you are a willing bond servant or a bond slave to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And I just want to share with you that, you know, I, I, I had a, a conversation. I'm going to take a sidebar. I had a conversation with the lady today, and what she shared with me was how she was wanting to get into school. She was wanting to do a few things with her life, but every time she tried, she just felt like she couldn't. We unpacked that. She started telling me a little bit more about her situation. This is what she said. She said, I convinced myself that I can't study. I convinced myself that I can't learn. I can't use a computer. I can barely use my phone. I said, well, why do you feel that way? Remember the word feel. This is what she shared. I feel that way because I'm ashamed, I'm embarrassed, and I'm humiliated. And I said, well, tell me, where did that first start? Long story short, this woman is in her 40s, wanting to get back in school. She was held back from an issue when she was 14 years old, where she got hurt. 14 years. All that time had passed by. She had moved on with her life. But that one past hurt created all these feelings of shame, all these feelings of embarrassment, all these feelings that crept up any time she would try to move forward. Years later, past hurts keep you paralyzed to future opportunities because they mess with your mind. They create roadblocks in your mind. And the Lord wants everything, every weight laid aside. He says, lay, let's lay aside every weight that so easily entangles us. Would you today lay aside your past hurt? Would you be willing to open up your heart and ask the Lord to heal you? Exposing the root, the really deep seated root. Because if you do, what you'll find is forgiveness, peace, and joy. Not superficially, but unapologetic peace and joy. And I have to be honest, when there's healing, you don't want to pick back up that hurt. And I just want to encourage you to check out this last verse that I want to share with you. And that's 1 John chapter 3, verses 18 to 24. Verse 18, dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Then this is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his command live in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. The reason why I wanted to share this verse is because if your heart condemns you because of the hurt that you have suffered, just know that God is greater than your heart. If you can't find it in yourself to move past this issue, to move over this hump or this hill, just know that God is greater than the hump and the hill. If this issue in your heart is keeping you from living a life full and free because of this heart issue, this weight, this, this, this discouragement, God is greater than your heart. And if that's the case, how are we living? Is it in love? Is it in truth? Or are we believing a lie about the hurt because we might want to point the finger in the blame? 
If that's the case, I encourage you to forgive and to love. I want to encourage you to be mindful that we have a command that is still in effect. And that command is twofold, to believe in the Son and to love one another. And if you have a past hurt that you just can't get over, just know that you can receive love and love anyway. You can love where you're hurt. You can have love where you're hurt. That's what conquers all. So with that, I just want to remind you that past hurts are past. That hurts can be healed. If you're triggered, don't hide from it. Don't push away, but expose it so that you don't have to medicate it, but you can receive healing so you never have to worry about it again. Be free. Be healed. Be made whole. My name is William Council. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. And I pray that you prosper even as your soul prospers. Thank you.